Hello everyone, my name is Cole Regels. I am a Take Charge Cats ambassador, and I'm also a senior at the University of Arizona studying economics. Today, I wanna to go over the psychology of saving with you. This is a topic that's pretty interesting to me because uh, of my economics background, of course. But I also think it's really important for people to understand the psychology of saving because it'll help us um, in terms of molding and shaping our behavior towards saving and, and perhaps overcoming some inherent biases that we all have when saving. So I'm gonna begin with two interesting facts. That's um, in 2018, 29% of American households had less than $1,000 in savings. And for the bottom 40% of Americans, the median savings account totaled $0. These are uh, rather dire numbers. They're, they're really kind of upsetting to see that so many people are struggling. Um, I included 2018 numbers because we actually um, can see now that Americans are improving their savings, but it's only after the government provided economic impact payments and stimulus checks over the course of the pandemic. So I think that with time, we'll start to see us slowly shift back towards the norm of uh, lower savings accounts. But that's not necessarily um, all a bad thing. I mean, we're sitting here now, we're looking at these numbers and we're learning from it. So there's a lot to learn. And I think that we can begin the process of learning with understanding why we struggle to save. Um, excluding external factors like economic opportunity and uh, low wages, we see that there are are actually three psychological problems to saving. And that's our present bias, uh, inertia, and loss aversion. When we discuss present bias, we mean um, the fact that humans are naturally hardwired to continue doing something if we find it to work. This hails back all the way to our caveman days and, and beyond. You know, so if you if you're a caveman and you wake up and you go outside and you have a little schedule and you come back to the cave that very night and you survived, well, you might want to do that little schedule again the next day because that means that you have a pretty good chance of surviving. It doesn't help us though um, when we talk about saving because we find ourselves to just continue to do the same, and that's asking the question. How can we overcome the challenges of saving? It's not an easy thing. Um, it's definitely something that's not quick. But as you see in this title of the slide, I put the quick fix because these are just three things that, um, you know, we can quickly go over to understand that will help us in our uh, ability to overcome the inherent biases that we have. 
So the first step is to understand those biases. That's an important uh, that's an important step because when you understand the problem at hand, you're more likely to find solutions to it and to overcome it. Once again, those inherent biases are our present bias, our inertia, and our loss aversion. Uh, the next step is to pay yourself first. So we go over this in a different presentation. I suggest to watch it if you haven't already. And paying yourself first is just making that making that saving process automatic. So as soon as you get paid, put that money, put whatever you need to away in your savings. Don't wait until you're done spending in order to save. That's going to ensure that you have money left over, and it's going to make it a lot easier uh, than it would be. And when we save, um, we find that not only can it um, help us, you know, financially and, and we build up a nice amount in our bank account, you know, it feels good to have those numbers in there. But it can also do some some very interesting and, and meaningful uh, things to improve your life. Like it can improve your mental health. So as a college student, um, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this at maybe at different points in our life. Maybe you didn't go to college, but you just experienced this at some point, which is when you don't have a lot of savings, when you don't have a lot of money put away to protect you from uh, difficult times, you find that your mental health kind of hurts. And it's difficult to feel safe and secure uh, most days, knowing that you can't afford if your car breaks down or you can't afford if you break uh, a bone or, or you need to go to the doctor, you know? So I know that I've actually been through this quite a bit going through college. It's really, it's, it's really not good. Um, I would suggest saving money just for the fact that it improves your mental health, because I've found that as I've saved money, um, I've been happier and healthier and been more focused on my academics and other pursuits rather than just constantly worrying about um, my financial health. And then saving money can also provide you short and long-term security. So when we talk about short-term security, we're talking about protecting you from, uh, you know, those quick expenses that pop up out of nowhere, like your car breaking down or uh, you getting sick. But um, it also can provide you with long-term security. The most popular one being retirement. So retirement gives you the, having retirement savings gives you the option of uh, not working. And that's pretty nice. I I don't want to work for the rest of my life. I, I would probably want to work for a good chunk of it, but, uh, you know, eventually you just want to stop. You want to spend time with your grandkids maybe, or you want to travel more. And so, uh, saving for the long term, saving for that retirement gives you that security to stop working eventually in the future. And then finally, uh, saving can help you achieve your goals. So we talked about that security, um, and that may be a goal of yours, but it can also be things like saving up to buy a house. It can be saving up to buy a new computer or those clothes that you really want or those shoes that you've been looking at for a long time. So, uh, by establishing goals and achieving them, you improve your mental health because that's very nice. It feels good to finally hit a goal that you've set for a long time. Um, and it also shows you that you can achieve a lot more than you've ever expected. You know, a lot of people, they uh, start out saving and then they realize it's going to take a long time to achieve what they want to do and they may give up. But if you keep with it, then uh, you'll quickly come to find out that you're financially capable of a lot more than you ever thought you were. So uh, that's a brief synopsis on the psychology of saving. I hope I answered a few of your questions that you might have had about the topic. Um, but I also hope that I struck up a couple questions for you to ask and for you to go looking for uh, answers for. So thank you for uh, watching my presentation. 